Ted. Woe to knows. them who call evil good and good evil. Yes. And put Woe light you, for darkness friend. and Woe sweetness. To you. God will always protect those who fight for love. If they're fighting with weapons that don't kill human beings but kill their ignorance. And so we should fear when we see war come to a generation because this is God. And it's Satan in us that keeps us, it con convinces us that it is evil attacking us. But because we haven't overcome the evil within ourselves, we project our own delusions out into the world and we fail to see that it is God attacking us. Well, thank you, Sean. And, uh, and thank the American people across the board, the American government, uh, the Congress, the Senate, uh, the president, everybody uh, has been very, very strong for Israel because they understand that our fight is your fight and our victory is your victory. And there is no substitute for victory. We have to have the forces of civilization beat these barbarians because otherwise this barbarism will spread and will endanger the entire world. Every American, uh, every civilized country would be under peril. We have to win. There is no substitute for victory, total victory. We must be nonviolent. We must walk as Christ taught us to walk. He's the Lamb of God. When they came to give Jesus trouble, did he fight back? No, he just fell down as a lamb. Scripture says that we must walk in peace and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Mohandas Gandhi said the only devils that are running around in the earth are the devils that are inhabiting our own psyches. And the only place, the only war that we are allowed to fight against others is against the devils of our own lower nature. And because they have, they, they're not fighting against the devils of their own lower nature, they think everything out here is devils. And that's why they're going out to fight what they perceive the devil, and they don't realize that God is fighting against them because they're the devils. Okay, now, here is the law. I am commanding you in the written law that when you go into the land that God has promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I want you to kill everybody you see there. Right, that's what the law says, the Torah says it. I want you to kill every man you meet, I want you to kill every woman you meet. I want you to destroy every child you meet. And I want you to kill all the livestock. Well, that's what Moses' law says. The land that is promised to each and every child of God is not real estate at all. It's the body. This is the land. You see, we're entering. That's exactly right. This is the, mis this is the promise right here. So as the soul enters into the empire of its own soul, you must go in there and destroy every enemy you meet. And who is your enemy? Yourself. You are, your, your ignorance is your enemy. The, the dark nature in your own soul is your enemy. Now those Zionists who read the Bible literally, and those Muslims who read the Koran literally, which is based upon the criteria of the Law and the Prophets, are uh, taking the literal exposition of the law and using it as justification for killing each other. Because they see in each other the infidel, they don't see the infidel in themselves. Moses says, now look, every man you meet, I want you to kill. Then he says, but here's the meaning. The man in every one of us is that propensity, that inclination I have within my own natural self to sow the seed of error into the consciousness of another person. That is metaphorically the man that Moses wants me to destroy. And then he says, I want you to go into yourself and I want you to kill every woman that you meet there. And a woman metaphorically is every inclination I have within myself to open myself up to receive the seed of wrong instruction. I must destroy that out of myself because in the interaction of wrong reception and wrong sowing, I develop wrong thoughts, which are the children that are born out of the relationship from wrong associations. So Moses said, kill that. Now, 
if anybody reads the scriptures literally and believes that Moses wants us to kill children, then yikes, <laughs> Who, who's going to serve that religion? You must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Holy Bible. And we do remember and we are fighting our brave troops and combatants who are now in Gaza or around Gaza and in all other regions in Israel are joining this chain of Jewish heroes, a chain that has started 3,000 years ago from Joshua ben Nun until the heroes of 1948, the Six-Day War, the Seventh. 23 October war and all other wars in this country are hero troops. They have one supreme main goal to completely defeat the murderous enemy and to guarantee our existence in this country. We've always said never again, never again is now. When Moses commands us to make war. That is all allegory. We're not to take it literally. Because Moses tells us we're to kill our enemies, and our enemies is ourselves. That's the only person we're allowed to kill is ourselves. There's, there's an evil within each, each exactly. one of us. Exactly. Each and one of that's us. That's what we must destroy. And we have to come into terms of that. If, if we don't, we can't really... If we don't, we'll wind up following them yes. and going out and killing what we perceive to be yeah, evil right. in others, which is really God. אנחנו מטילים מצור מוחלט על העיר עזה. אין חשמל, אין מזון, אין מים, אין דלק. הכל סגור. אנחנו נלחמים בחיות אדם ואנחנו נוהגים בהתאם. <coughs> and so, unless we are not serving a higher state of consciousness, unless we are not, what the scripture says, born anew, then we're still serving our lower nature, which is a, the nature of a beast. Because you know what beasts do? Beasts kill, they, they are killed, they, they uh, live according to the law of the jungle, competition, survival, that's what the capitalist order does. You see, it's a beastly order. Everyone in our time will decide whether they serve this doctrine of vengeance and violence or the doctrine of Christ which commands us to follow peace and holiness with all men in all circumstances without which no man shall see the Lord. Because I, we all had to see evil for what it is and I had to see evil in myself. If I, didn't, if I didn't come to grips with the darkness, the lust, the greeds, the, the, uh, all of the, the terrible things about myself, I could never come to my own state of perfection. And we as a people could never come to our state of perfection if we did not see Babylon, if we didn't see what evil could do, how perfect and beautiful and enticing it is. Evil is a very enticing thing. It's very glorious. That's why Lucifer is called the light bearer. It, the, the light of evil is very attractive. Well, there is a new age being born, but these men are trying to create the world in their image. God is creating a world in their image, and we have to decide whose world we want to live in. The one that is being destroyed or the one that is coming. 